Hello, and welcome to another episode of Something Something Chat Show with your host, Tom Jr. Jackson presents after the movie review episode 26. Today's movie is Arsenic and Own Lace. Now, um, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe on my channel. Check out the, li the links below for Positive Fandom and the Post Geek Singularity. Both channels are both worthy to look up and check out. There are links for what you can do with those channels down below. Check them out. Let them know that you heard about them from me, Tom Jr. Jackson, because I am, as always, your host. And I want to get right into this um, review today of Arsenic and Old Lace. Well, if we're going to discuss old school Hollywood actors, I have a few favorites, but one of them I really enjoy is Cary Grant. One of my favorites is Cary Grant. And on September 21st, 1944, uh, a little movie that Cary Grant was in called Arsenic and Old Lace premiered. Um, this Warner Brothers picture was directed by the legendary Frank Capra. Frank Capra, who directed such films as Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and the legendary It's a Wonderful Life as well. This is based on Joseph Kesseling's play with a screenplay by Julius J. Epstein, or Epstein, depending on how you pronounce it, and Philip G. Epstein or Epstein, as you would pronounce it as well. Um, Our Snick and Old Lace is about a Brooklyn writer who writes books about the uh, futility of marriage, uh, of marriage risks, uh, of marriage, I should say. He's someone who doesn't believe in it, someone who finds a problem with it, but he's just, he decides to risk his whole reputation when he decides to tie the knot. And things get even crazier when he goes to his aunt's house in Brooklyn and find out his aunts have a penchant for unusual activities. Now, Arsenic and Old Lace is a comedy crime thriller. It's based on a stage play and it's about as bonkers as you would want to see a film. Um, the film takes place on Halloween of 1944. Um, there's a baseball game with the Yankees and the, no, I think it's the Dodgers and the Giants. I could be wrong. Um, but it's it's one it, there's a baseball game that has a significant play at the beginning. It, it, it's it's shown at the beginning for a reason. And um, from there it just says, you know, this is Halloween and even the strangest things can happen on Halloween and usually does. Um, just a few little tidbits about Cary Grant. Cary Grant, his birth name was Archie Leach. And in this film, there's a cemetery. And as you go by on one of the gravestones, it says Archie Leach. And it's not till years and years and years and years later when uh, John Cleese on Monty Python wrote the film, um, a fish called Wanda, and his main character is named um, Archie Leach, because he was such a fan of Cary Grant. And who is it? Cary Grant's made some spectacular films, uh, North by Northwest, um, North by Northwest, Arsenic and Old Lace, um, The Bishop's Wife, um, Bishop's Wife. He's made um, Bishop's Wife. 
North by Northwest. He's done a few, like Charade, Charade, which was remade years later as The Trouble with Charlie or The Truth About Charlie. Um, he's, he's a great actor who can do comedy and drama and tread on that subject pretty well. Um, he, he's a great, great actor. And he was married, I believe, to Diane Cannon at one point and later in life. Um, Cary Grant considers this film to be his least favorite because his acting, he believes, is not at his best. He believes he's a little bit too broad or over the top with his acting. But watching this film, it's kind of, it kind of goes with it. It fits the film. You know, it's his reactions are pure genius when it comes to this film and, and how he and looks at the camera almost and makes these mugs and makes these faces and whatnot. And he's funny. He, he was a funny guy, but he did not like the show. Um, so this is probably somewhere in it. The time I'm making this, he's done like 40 something films at the time. Um, yeah. So about 40 something films. And um, in the play, the character he plays is, is named Brewster. And he goes home to get his stuff from his aunt's house because he and his uh, wife are going to go to Niagara Falls. And they get there and all this craziness starts. And he has a brother in this film. And this guy does not like being told. They'll go, hey, you look familiar. Where have I seen you before? And then they'll go, hey, he looks like Boris Karloff. And the reason for that is, is that um, this was a stage play, as I said before. And Boris Karloff um, really wanted to be in a stage play and, and wasn't allowed to because they wanted him still in the play because they felt people were coming to see the play because he was in. And he really wanted to do a play. And it wasn't until, I don't know, a few years later, he was allowed to do a television. I think it's a television or radio version of, of this play as well. Uh, the two aunts. One of the aunts is played by Josephine Ho, who was Jimmy Stewart's sister in her and she and the other lady who plays um, Kelly Grant's aunt in the film, it's, a be it's beautifully done. And there's a man in it who plays the character of Teddy Roosevelt. He thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt. Um, Bob Hope was the first choice to play the Cary Grant role, but he was not available, so it went to Cary Grant. They really wanted Bob Hope for this. Um, the character they got to play the Boris Karloff role, though, I mean the man, the man that Boris Karloff plays in the in the play, in the play Boris Karloff plays the brother, but the brother in the show in the movie is played by an actor named Raymond Ma uh, Massey. And they put makeup on him and stuff like that to look almost like um, Boris Karloff, almost. And they don't say it by name, but he looks like Frankenstein, really. 
Uh, and it's very, very funny of how that plays out in, in the film. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, quirky and goofy thing, but it, it's very funny. And, uh, and they believed the inspiration for this film was by uh, Amy Archer Gilligan. Um, she was America's most prolific female serial killer. And she was cited as the inspiration for the story. She was charged in poisoning two of her husbands and was allegedly responsible for the deaths of 66 other elderly inmates at the nursing home that she was at in her uh, weapon of choice was arsenic. I think that's fascinating that this was just based on that, that they went, okay, well, we can do this and we'll do it with the aunts. And um, it's very, very funny um, how, how that all fits in and stuff. This has a spectacular cast. It's Josephine Hull, it's Cary Grant, it's Raymond Massey. Um, at one point, um, what's his name? Um, Peter Lorre is in the film. And if you don't know who Peter Lorre is, if you ever watched Ren and Stimpy and the character of, of Ren, Stimpy, you idiot, that, that, the guy with that voice, that is Peter Lorre that's based on, you idiot. Yeah, so he plays an assistant to the Raymond Massey, an assistant to the Raymond Massey part. He plays um, the, the doctor in the film. And he's very funny in this movie as well. But he's also, Peter Lorre was also in um, Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart as well. And in that, he's very good in this movie. Um, at the time of shooting this movie, the production code was asked to ask the filmmakers to tone down the sexual frustration of the couple. So if you see this movie, they get married and then they um, get back to his aunt's house and they're running around the cemetery, which is outside the house. And you can tell that all he really wants to do is ball his new wife, but it's, it's done in such a way where it's not too, too hypersexualized, you know? And you can tell that's what he wants to do. I mean, nowadays you could tell that's exactly what he wants to do. But for this movie at the time, they thought it was a little too much. And there was an actual code of how much of that frustration you can actually show on the uh, screen. Mm -hmm. And at the time of production, Warner Brothers announced that it was the Brewster house. The house that the aunts live in was the largest set ever built at the studio. The house was complete, room by room, in every detail. Production records confirm that the uh, several uh, scenes were shot in the various rooms of the Brewster house. Uh, The study, uh, the aunt's room, bedroom, and the cellar. And the cellar plays a big, big part in this movie. I'm not going to tell you why, but it plays a big part. This house plays a big part as well. Um, the house itself is a character in the movie. But the uncle who is in the film thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt. And it's very, very funny of, 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 of how he does it. And he looks just like him. 
Um, that's one of my favorite things about this one. That, that made me laugh the most. Just that this guy thought he was the president and everybody would have to salute him and they'd see him and stuff. It's a rather a funny, funny thing. Uh, now, the Bell Phone Company, that's the company that would give out telephones. And in those days, if you don't know, telephones had a landline. And their new model, their new model telephone was the French telephone, which had both the uh, microphone here and the ear. You can talk, you know, hey, hello, how are you doing? So you were talking to this here from here. Whereas before that, they would have it where the phone would be up against the wall and they'd have a phone like this and hold it and you take a little piece off and be like, hello, hello. And it'd be like a mi microphone piece here that you'd speak into. But the earpiece itself uh, would be separate. So then you'd hang it like that or it'd be up against the wall then. And, and this was, um, and then the, the microphone and earpiece were in the same unit for the phones, you know, like, like this. Um, this was really what you would call early advertising. Like, Advertising at its best because the phones like that were, were brand new then. And I, I think that's pretty cool. So, in a way, this film is not only a period piece in a way, but it's also uh, a period piece of its time for the year that it was, it took place, which was 1944. But um, also, um, having that phone being brand new at that time, which um, is pretty cool. It's like a little piece of history, a little moment in time. Um, and it was always always determined that the director, Frank Capra, was gonna go back into this film and tone down how broad and uh, outrageous that um, Terry Grant was, but then the war happened and he ended up finishing the film, but then never going back and, and doing all the editing that he wanted to do because he ended up going and making his career of making movies and doing the war, of, of, of doing war films, like where he would go and film the actual war itself. Like a lot of filmmakers did that. I think there's a, a documentary about the different Hollywood filmmakers, like I think John Ford as well, who would go out and film the um, the, the war and then they'd send it back to Hollywood so people could see it and stuff. Um, I really do recommend this film, Our Second Old Race. It, it's slapstick comedy crime thriller at its best. I, I really do. And as a matter of fact, uh, the Criterion Collection just released this on Blu-ray. Beautifully done. The picture is crisp, clear, beautiful. There's even a, I believe, a radio version of the play included with this. There's a commentary on it as well. I haven't watched the commentary yet. And if you know anything about me, I am uh, a person that loves to get physical media, especially if it has a commentary track. Uh, commentary tracks are really useful because if there's a commentary track that has a track by the director on it, which is mostly like um, newer films. But if it, if it does, uh, what you want is um, for it to be, to be on there and you can hear, why well, director did this? Well, I did that, and this could have been like this, and 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 what was the reasoning for doing what? And I like that stuff. I like that behind the scenes stuff. Um, commentary tracks, believe it or not, folks, they are your free master class on filmmaking. And if it's an older film, then you get a film historian that will give you their point of view of, of this film and give you the facts and everything like that. 
I believe a few of the um, old Universal Monster movies have commentary tracks by historians, film historians and stuff and stuff like that. Our Snicking Old Lace as well has um, that. Um, let's see here. I think that's it. I think we're done with this episode. And I think that was a fantastic episode as well. I would say definitely check out Arsenic and Old Lace. If you're into those old time screwy comedy crime thriller type horror classics. Uh, yeah, it's just like a crime thriller, but it's comedy as well. Um, it's based on the stage play. I would like to see this done. I'd like to see them put this back on Broadway or see someone maybe redo this film. Uh, either nowadays or do it as either a period piece or doing it set now in, in, in our times now. But I, it's, it, I love Cary Grant, as I said before. And I really do enjoy this film. So please remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell on my channel, but also check out the Post Geek Singularity channel, which has uh, such shows as Midnight Musings, Midnight Metal, uh, Let's Get Physical Media, Whining About Movies, Fully Articulated Observations, and the newest show, Ladies of the PGS, with your host, RM, every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. And then check out RM's channel, Positive Fandom, where she does unboxing, she does reviews, such as movie, television shows, theatrical trailer reactions and reviews, out of the theater reviews, and a Sunday morning show, every Sunday morning, Sunday morning brunch live, with her and her co-host, Russ Whitfield, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. You don't want to miss it. It's pop culture at its best being parlayed by two excellent people. RM is uh, my friend, and I am her co-collaborator. I am a moderator on that channel. Excuse me. So please check them out. And as always, folks, remember, Wherever you are, wherever you go, may it be here, there, or everywhere in the 29 known galaxies, we are all goof people. And we'll see you next time and have a pleasant tomorrow. Bye bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. <laughs> so long, folks. <laughs>